bone classifications. Bones can be classified by their location. They are either axial or appendicular. Axial bones are in your skull, your spinal cord, your ribs, and your sternum. Appendicular bones are everywhere else in your body. Shape classifications are bone, of bones. They can either be long bones, short and sesamoid bones, flat bones, or irregular bones. We have some examples of bones. Long bones are like your femur, your tibia, or your humerus. Other examples of long bones can be found in your feet, in the ends of your bones toward the phalanges, and then short bones can be found here up in your tarsals. An example of a sesamoid bone is right here. It's very shaped like a sesame seed, and it can be found in your patella, AKA the kneecap. Examples of flat bones are your sternum, and they're also found in the bones of the skull and like the scapula. Examples of irregular bones are your coxal bones or the bones that make up your coxal or the vertebrae. Bones are also have a lot of different functions. Bones provide support. They provide a framework for your body and they cradle soft organs. Another function of bones is protection. Bones protect your organs from impact. Bones also help facilitate movement. They provide attachment points for muscles. Bones also are mineral storage sites. They store calcium. Blood cell formation also happens in bones. In the tissue of red bone marrow, you make blood cells. And as a bonus, yellow bone marrow is where we store fat. Skeletal cartilages. Skeletal cartilage is not innervated, so it does not have nerves and is avascular, meaning it does not have any blood vessels. There are three types of hyaline cartilage you can find in the human body. Hyaline cartilage, it's made of small collagen fibers. It's the most abundant in the body. There are two types, articular, which can be found at the ends of bones and in your nose, and costal cartilage. It connects your ribs to your sternum. Elastic cartilage has elastic fibers and can be found in your ears. It's quite stretchy and it's also found in your epiglottis. Fibrocartilage has large collagen fibers. It is very good at protecting against impact and is very strong. So you can find it in your intervertebral disc. Cartilage can grow in two different ways. Cartilage grows oppositional or interstitial. Oppositional growth is growth from the outside. It makes bones thicker. Interstitial growth is how most bones grow. It's growth from the inside. Intramembraneous ossification occurs in the first eight weeks of fetal development. The first step of intramembraneous ossification has to do with the ossification center forming in the fibrous membrane. Now the mesenchymal cells cluster and differentiate into osteoblasts and they form in the ossification center. The second step of the intramembraneous ossification is step number two, secretion of the osteoid. Osteoid is secreted and calcifies. The osteoblasts continue to secrete the osteoid which calcifies in a few days. Now this is also trapped osteoblast and the osteoblast that is trapped becomes osteocyte. Now the third step of the intramembraneous ossification has to do with the formation of woven bone and periosteum. Now woven bone is also called spongy bone. Now in step number three, the accumulating osteoid is laid down between embryonic blood vessels forming a honeycomb of immature spongy bone. In step number three, the vascularized mesenchyme condenses on the extents 
on the external on the external face of the bone and becomes the periosteum. Now, for step number four, the formation of bone collar. The formation of bone collar has to do with the compact bone replacing the immature spongy bone. Just deep to the periosteum, red marrow develops. The immature spongy bone in the center is remodeled into mature spongy bone that is eventually filled with red bone marrow, trabeculae just deep to the periosteum are remodeled and replaced with compact bone, and that is intramembranous ossification. Okay, so we're going to talk about endochondrial ossification. So I, I brought, well, here's my beautiful pictures. And then I got some easier, probably, to understand pictures out of the book. So I can better explain it. Endochondrial ossification always starts with a cartilage model bone. Has hyaline cartilage that gets turned into bone. So the first thing that happens, there's quite a few steps, there's six in total. First thing that happens is formation of hyaline cartilage model of bone, which is like, here we go, in the blue part. Formation of bone collar around hyaline cartilage model, which is right here, and then right there, my beautiful picture. Cavitation of hyaline cartilage at primary ossification center. So you see how it's starting to make like a cavity right here, right there. Number four, invasion of parasteal buds and formation of spongy bone. So right here is the blood vessels moving in. Here's mine, mine's kind of giant. So here it goes. And then you got your spongy bone formation right there. Just like that. And then the formation of a medullary cavity and invasion of buds into epiphysis. So here's your medullary cavity. Right there. And then you have your blood vessels starting to invade the epiphysis one on each side of the bone and here's my drawing here they are and then the last thing is a secondary ossification at epiphysis so here's your secondary ossification center right there pretty cool Oops. The first thing I want to talk about is bone structure, compact bone versus spongy bone. This right here is compact bone, and this right here is spongy bone. Compact bone are thin sheets of smooth bone. Those cover outside of all of your bones. The spongy bone are at the ends of the bone, have lots of holes in them, they kind of look like a sponge. All bones in the body have compact and spongy bone. Compact on the inside and spongy on the outside. The next thing I want to talk about is the gross anatomy of a typical long bone. And I have my drawing here, but I also have like a better picture um, for you to see. Um, so diaphysis is right here. It's in the kind of in the middle. It's the shaft. Epiphysis is at the end of each bone, the ends. This is your proximal epiphysis and your distal epiphysis. We already talked about, here's the spongy bone interior. Here's mine. 
Here's a better looking picture. And the epi epiphyseal line, the epiphyseal line is here. I left mine blank in my drawing, but that's what that is. And then on the bone here, it's the epiphyseal line is right there. And then the articular cartilage, which is right here on the outside. Here's my beautiful picture. And then here's a probably a better looking picture. And in the articular cartilage, it is made of hyaline cartilage, and it's at the end of the bones, like we just saw, and it's where bones move against other bones. Fracture repair has four steps. Formation of fracture repair, formation of fracture hematoma. The first step has to do with bone cells dying so they cut off from oxygen. So the first step, formation of fracture hematoma. So the bone cells die and they are cut off from oxygen. The second step has to do with the formation of the fibrocartilaginous callus. The second step, formation of fibrocartilaginous callus has to do with a soft callus and it starts by the reconnection. The third step has to do with the formation of bony callus. The third step has to do with the within one week. So formation of bone, bony callus is within one week, the osteoblasts lay down bony tissue. And lastly, bone remodeling. Bone remodeling has to do with the reshaping of bone. Unneeded bone is discarded. So again, fracture repair has to do with the formation of fracture hematoma, second formation of fibrocartilaginous, fibrocartilaginous callus, and the formation of bony callus. The last step would be the bone remodeling. That is fracture repair. Homeostatic imbalances. So in homeostatic imbalances, you have osteomalacia and rickets. Osteomalacia is in adults, and rickets is in a disease of, that children can get. Now, in this first one, osteomalacia and rickets, there happens to be a reduced dep deposition of calcium salt, meaning you're not depositing enough calcium salt. Now the second disease is osteoporosis. In osteoporosis, there is a destroying, it, it is destroying more bone than it is creating. So osteoporosis destroys more bone than it is created. And then for the last disease, it's Paget's disease. Paget's disease has to do with an excess bone that is deposited and makes extra bone, usually in spongy bone. So Paget's disease usually has to do with spongy bone and it's about an excess bone that is deposited. So osteomalacia is in adults and rickets is in children. Homeostatic imbalances has three diseases, osteomalacia and rickets, osteoporosis, and Paget's disease. We're going to talk to you about how bones integrate with other systems, specifically here, how it integrates with the endocrine system. It integrates with it by adjusting the blood calcium level. If your blood calcium level is too high, it targets your thyroid gland that produces calcitonin. And then that calcitonin causes an increase in osteoblast activity and a decrease in osteoclast activity. This lowers your blood calcium level. The osteoblast are building the bones and the osteoclast are tearing down that bone. If your blood calcium level is too low, it's going to target your parathyroid gland. This parathyroid gland produces, produces PTH, which is parathyroid hormone. This 
causes an increase in osteoclast activity, also increased absorption in the kidney, and an increased absorption in the GI tract. All of this raises your blood calcium level. This is compact bone, this entire thing. And this is the membrane of the compact bone that is this blue thing right here. It is called the periosteum. And if you zoom in right here, you can see the perforating fibers are these little white things right here. And then if you come over and you see the perforating canal that goes sideways. And then this entire circle is the osteon. And then there is a lamellae. A lamellae is one ring that makes the osteon. And then these are called concentric lamellae. And over here, there's circumferential lamellae that go all around the compact bone. And then there are little holes called the lacunae. The lacuna have osteocytes that live in them, and the little legs of the lacuna of the osteocyte is called canaliculi. And then over here, you have spongy bone. All of these holes are spongy bone, and then it has a membrane called the endoosteum over here the endoosteum. And then there's trabeculae, which is the network and beams that separate the spongy bone. Trabeculae are these little lines that separate it. And there's no osteons found in the spongy bone. And these are the central canals. The central canals have these arteries. So the central canals have the art arteries, and that's the compact bone.